Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be improving the Zone Star. So, you guys might remember a little while back, I did the build series for this, put this together, did some printing with it, and really happy with this printer. Now, one of the things I want to do is kind of kick off making it a little bit better of a printer. So, I've been happy with the majority of how this printer works, uh, but we can always make it better. And again, this was a super cheap alternative to a two extruder um, printer so for around 250 bucks I'm really happy with this guy and and I'm really happy with um, how easy it is to make some of the modifications that I want to do so one of the things that I came across on Thingiverse were these mounts um, here now actually I've got one installed over here it's probably a little tough to see maybe if I move this over yep you can see it installed over here now the idea behind this is it holds this vertical uh, linear rail uh, in line with the um, actual Z lead screw on, on the side, what well, does it on both sides. They're ambidextrous, so you can just turn, you know, print it out. It's one uh, STL, print it out, turn it either way. Uh, the piece I like about this is one of the things, if you look at the build video I mentioned, the way that this kind of seats in here, there's a stamping down here at the bottom and it just kind of sits in there and one of the things I had to do is shim it down with a washer uh, to actually get this thing to to really sit in here because what happens is it wants to wiggle and move around uh, and, and so even with that washer there is still a little bit of play in this which means I'm gonna have a little bit of play in my z-axis so with this I thought this was really a good uh, idea for a first mod and I really like the looks of this there were several different options that held the rod this I thought was the most effective as well as the coolest looking I'll have uh, uh, you know, an overlay in the links below to this on uh, Thingiverse, and, and the designer did a really, you know, good job. You know, it's got nice uh, chamfered edges here. Uh, you know, kind of an indentation for the uh, the flex coupler. Just again, really nice design. Also, the way he towered the supports. Um, you know, again, I can't say enough good stuff about this. Anyways. Um, Let's go ahead and install it. But how do you install it? And that's what I kind of want to talk about in this video. So I want to introduce this and I want to talk about installing it. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to remove the four screws on the motor. Now you will need some uh, replacement screws because unfortunately the motor screws that they came, I, I received um, these uh, Phillips and I'm going to replace them with a little bit longer M3s. Uh, you know, these are probably, you know, five, six millimeter M3s. I think these are about 10 millimeters. So it needs to be a little bit longer because the uh, these are fairly thick, as you can see, even though the heads are recessed. Um, so I have some links to these down below, some general M3 sets if you don't have any. But one of the things, if you're going to be into 3D printing, get yourself, as you can see here, I've got a whole collection of M3s, and this just tip of the iceberg of washers nuts etc so again I'll have some links for this below um, and I suggest having those in, in your repertoire of extra parts um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually remove the coupler and then we're going to remove this assembly up here so I'm going to do a bit of a time lapse of me doing this stuff so you can kind of see it's a little bit boring for me to walk through this whole thing so let's go ahead let's do some of these this disassembly and then I'll cut back in and kind of share you know how to do the rest of this so let's jump into the time lapse okay so I've used the Phillips to remove the four bolts I've used the uh, what is this two millimeter uh, hex driver to loosen this up now this is loose so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just uh, undo this top piece my hands are probably in the way but sorry you'll kind of get the idea and again we're just going to take this apart so we can pull the uh, the assembly kind of forward is what we'll do so I've undone the two uh, self tapping screws that hold this bracket in place and then now I'm going to come in and uh, undo the mount that holds the screw that holds the linear rod in place now remember i shimmed it with a washer so i'm going to remove that so now this assembly is pretty much open so i can lift up on it and uh, also lift up on the uh, i don't want my rod to spin out on me 
And so, uh, kind of lift this out of the way. Now, one of the things, notice I've got the gantry up already, and you need to do that so you can get your fingers in there. So now I'm going to place this on here, and I'm just going to loosely uh, put this rod back into its pocket. And then I'm going to take my first one and kind of line, try to line this up. Now, this is going to take a little bit because this motor probably shifted. Now, one of the things I recommend doing here is... Uh, getting all four in before you begin to tighten this down because this can shift and uh, again kind of make it hard so again I'm just going to uh, get these started in and there we go we got the, that one started in and then if you kind of look you can kind of see if the holes line up and if the holes line up you're doing pretty good now the tolerances on this are, are not too bad. I did do a little cleanup, and I will have to more than likely use a hammer to kind of tap the rod in place, but it'll give me a real solid uh, hold on the rod. Now one of the things after you do this whole assembly is uh, you may need to energize it and loosen up all eight of these screws and kind of uh, run it up and down a few times till it finds its own center if you run into a binding problem you may or may not run into a binding problem if you don't great but if you do that's how you would fix it um, but again these are just great designs for these mounts I was really pleased I found some that that kind of go on there without doing all this disassembly but I really wasn't uh, as pleased with the design as I was this because the other ones that went on here just kind of held it from going back this way but it didn't hold it solid and that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure was happening is this would hold it really solid now before I tighten this this all up what I want to do is I'm going to take a ball peen hammer and I'm just going to tap this rod until it goes goes in place and should slide back underneath there. So I want to get this in place so I can have it uh, you know sitting vertical because I had this tipped out before and now I can go ahead and snug these up a little bit more and so just kind of snugging these up and going back around I'm really looking forward to doing a, a lot of stuff with this printer. So I'm, I'm excited to get into dual extrusion. Extrusion! I'll spit that out. But I want to get everything kind of set up first before I really get going on that. So now I've got all that set up, and that's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this metal uh, scale. And I'm going to place it here, and then I'm going to drop my... my uh, my lead screw back down and I want to get it so I'm just sitting on top of the uh, on top of the scale because what I did is I did the same over here so that way I'll have I'll have the same height on the scale uh, or distance uh, excuse me between the coupler and the uh, bottom of the motor so that way I know I'm pretty much on the mark then I'm going to go ahead and tighten down these. Now again, you kind of want to make sure you got the, um, you know, one of these grub screws against the uh, uh, flat side of the motor. And so I did. So that's all pretty much set up. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take... Now, I had used a lock washer to um, shim this out in the past. I'm actually going to reuse that lock washer and again that didn't this this lock washer didn't come with the kit. I used it as a shim for my own supply but I am going to use this to um, uh, underneath this screw to lock the uh, the rod down so this rod is held in with with you know a mechanical cinching. Now the other pieces I'm just going to move this up into place and I'm going to return my screws, my self-tapping screws in here. And then bingo. 
we're basically done. So, so it's a really quick process after you print these out. You know, it might be, you know, 10, 15 minutes to do this mod. But I really think this mod is, is a worthwhile one to, to do. So, boom, we're done. Uh, so it really looks great. I think these are super functional because now my rods have zero give as I'm pushing on the side and rocking the camera. Sorry about that. Uh, so this is really super. I'm really happy with this because it's locked in at the top now, locked in at the bottom. And we're really good to go. So many thanks to the developer. Unfortunately, I can't remember the developer's name, but I'll definitely have a link below and I'll have some overlays uh, because big kudos for this. So... Hopefully you found this interesting. If you got a zone star, now if you maybe have another printer like this or one of the other zone stars, these probably will work too. So, or if not, you know, maybe whip yourself up a set. So, uh, because this is really a good idea. Anyways, swag shop's going to be up in the corner. Whoop up over there i think and hey let me know what you think in the comments below did you get a zone star are you building a zone star are you using it what do you think of it i know a couple folks wrote me about it said they were following along let me know how you're doing in the comments and we'll see you guys in the next video where we either modify this some more we print something or we get excited about 3d printing and making stuff cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on